Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, I will show you how we can work with the camera control in Power Apps. We will leverage the camera control to take pictures, store all of these pictures in a collection, and then in one go, without using Power Automate, no flows, we will save the pictures that we've captured into the attachments of a SharePoint list item. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. To get started with the camera control in Power Apps, I will head over to the Insert tab, go to Media, and select the camera control. Now the camera control is going to leverage the camera of my device. Right now, I am on my desktop, so it's leveraging the camera on my desktop. If I'm on a mobile device, I have multiple cameras. I can also provide the user with options to switch the camera so they can accordingly pick the camera of their choice. Now, if I preview my app, here's my camera control. If I select this control, it will actually capture the image. Now, if I want to display that image, I can head over to insert, go to media and use the image control. So I'm going to place the image control right here. And for the image property of my image control, camera, and that's the name of my camera control dot. I have a property here called photo. Now, if I go and preview this app, each time I click on the camera control, it's going to take the image. So let's say I put my hand up, I take the picture. That's the picture that it has captured right here. Now, let's say I would like to create a collection of data. So as the user clicks on the camera control, it keeps, it keeps creating this collection of images. So for that, I will head over to gallery and insert a blank horizontal gallery, place this gallery here. In this gallery, insert an image control, just the height. And now for the camera control, there is a property called on select. So every time the user selects the camera, I will use the collect function to create a collection. I will give this collection a name. And in this collection, I will add my camera control so I can either directly point to it by using the name of the control, or I can use the self function because this property is for the camera control itself. So self dot photo. So that completes my function, wherein every time the user clicks on the camera control, it will add the photo into that collection. Now I will leverage that collection as the items property for the gallery that I just created. Now that I've done this, let me go ahead and preview the app. And as I start clicking on the camera control, if you look at the bottom, it's gone ahead and added all that data into the collection. And these are all the images that I captured as I was clicking on the camera control. So I've added a button now to clear all those images. So on select of this button, I will call the clear function to clear that collection. So if I preview the app, click clear images, the images will be cleared. Another key property around camera control is around its stream functions. So if you search for stream, there's a property called stream rate. And basically what this does is if you define your time there in milliseconds, once that time that you've defined is complete, it will take a picture automatically. So the user does not even have to click on the image. So the stream rate now I've defined as 10,000, that is 10 seconds. And on the on stream function, I am using that same collection, but this time, I'm loading the data from self dot stream property. That means what is currently being streamed is what it's going to capture. So basically after every 10 seconds, we'll take a picture on that camera control and place it right there in my collection at the bottom. Let me preview my app, clear my images and let's check this out. You see every 10 seconds, it just grabs the image and plugs it in to my collection right here. So this can act like the burst mode on your camera control. If I reduce the stream rate and then just use the camera control, it can just start taking pictures like in burst mode. Another property of the camera control is something known as camera. And by default, if you notice, it puts a number here zero. Now, if I was to add a drop down control 
on this screen. And for the items property, I will use the camera control dot. There is a property called available devices. And what this will do is this will list out all the available camera devices that are currently connected to my desktop or my mobile device. So right now, I have my own webcam that I'm leveraging right here. So it's actually putting the name of my webcam right here. But I can switch. I can switch to a different camera if I have additional devices connected and the camera control will change its behavior. It will change its experience. And the output of this available devices is actually a table. If I open this table right here, you see I have IDs and I have the names of my device. These IDs are basically the camera that is currently in action. Currently, my camera control is on the camera zero. That's why it's on my webcam. So if I switch this to one, it will head over to the camera on my laptop, which is actually facing down right now. So you see it changed the camera. So basically it can pick the camera depending upon the ID number of the device that is plugged in right here. So these are some of the key properties that you need to be aware of when you are working with the camera control. Now keeping all the learnings of the camera control in mind, let me show you an app that I built leveraging the camera control and using SharePoint as a data source to store the images that I capture from the camera control. And these images I will be storing into my SharePoint list as attachments. So for example, I have an inspection list and I have one of my line items here which says lawn inspection. If I open this item, I have attachments right here. These are those images that I have captured from my camera control. So if I select one of this, it will go ahead and open up the image that I captured live from my camera control. Now as part of my app on the home screen, I am just displaying a gallery of all the data from my SharePoint list. And the image that you see here in the gallery, first attachment of that list item. And the way I did that is for this gallery control, I have an image control right here. Now the attachments property returns tabular data. Because I just want a single image to show up on my gallery, I have used the first function to just grab the first attachment. And then I just use the dot value function and it will place the first attached image to that gallery item. If I preview my app, I can go ahead and select an item. It will take me to the form displaying all the data associated with that item. And right here at the bottom, I have a gallery that is showcasing all the images, which are basically those attachments for this specific item. Now I will go ahead and create a new inspection item. I will inspect my keyboard. So I've just gone ahead and filled certain details about the inspection. I'm inspecting it today. And I've just put in some sample data for the site address, city, state, and zip. Now next, I would like to add pictures using the camera control. So if I select this, it takes me to a screen where I have that same camera control option and I can just click on it and take pictures. Now I've just placed my camera here on my keyboard. So let's say I'm doing an inspection of this keyboard. I'm going to just make a few selections. All right, just taking three pictures of this keyboard. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to hit back. So all my three pictures are captured and I can go ahead and click submit. And this will now submit the data to my data source, which in my case is my SharePoint list. And here again, it's showing me that first image in the gallery. And if I select this item, Right here at the bottom, I can see all those three images that I captured. If I head over to my SharePoint list, I see my keyboard line item right here. And as attachments, I have all my images. Now, if you've ever worked with the camera control before, the pictures that you capture, if you want to post that to your data source, you would have to leverage flow, pass your collection of images as JSON to flow and then loop through all those items and start adding it as attachments. However, in this example that I'm showcasing, if I head over to data sources or the connections, you will see that I have no connection to Power Automate whatsoever. So I am not using Power Automate 
but I am still able to upload those images as attachments to my SharePoint list. So first step is when I'm creating a record. So when the user clicks on the plus icon, the formula that I'm leveraging here is first I'm clearing a collection of images. Reset form, set the mode of the form to new and navigate the user to the inspection screen. So when I click this, it takes me to the inspection form screen, wherein the form now is set to new mode. And the user can create a new record. Now when the user clicks on the add photos icon right here, it will just navigate the user to the inspection photos screen. And as part of this screen, I have my camera control. For the on select property of my camera control, the first step is I'm setting a variable and I'm using the GUID function, which basically generates a random GUID on the fly. I am then adding data to a collection of images. And for that, I am using a record that has the following three properties. Now, why do I use these three properties? I'll explain shortly. The property names have to be as follows. Display name, ID and value. For the display name and the ID property, I'm leveraging that variable which has the good and then I'm appending the extension of my file name, which in my case here is .jpg. So I'm setting the display name, I'm setting the ID and then I have a property called value and in this is where I place the photo, which is the picture that is captured by the camera control. So now that I have my on select function defined here, the moment I preview my app and as I start clicking or selecting the camera control, it's taking that picture and adding it to that collection. And right here at the bottom, I have a gallery, which is basically showing the data from that collection. Very similar to what I showcased earlier when I was going through the camera control. The only difference here is that when I'm adding data to the collection, I'm adding that data in a particular format. I've also given the user an option here to delete an item from that collection of required. And on select of that icon, I'm using the remove if function to remove it from the collection of images. If the display name matches the display name of the item in the gallery. So once these pictures are captured, when the user clicks on the back button, it takes the user back to the main form screen. Now in the screen, if you observe at the bottom, I have this label here that says add photos and it gives the count of the number of photos. Well, that count I'm grabbing directly from that collection of images. Now, how am I adding that collection of images directly to my SharePoint list item attachments? Well, for that in my form control, I have my data card of attachments and this data card of attachments, the visibility is set to false. So the user does not even realize that those images are actually going in as attachments. If I change the property of this data card to true, and if I preview my app, if I scroll down now, you will see that in the attachment section, I have the data that's present in that collection. So those images are directly being applied here as attachments. For the attachments data card, if you look at the default property, this is for the data card. The default property is that same collection. And there is also another property for the data card called update. Even that property, I have set it as that same collection. That means as more and more images get added to that collection, automatically all those images would be added right here as attachments. Now bear in mind that the attachment control has specific limitations. If we look at certain properties here, maximum number of attachments that are allowed as part of this control, max attachment size, these can be increased. However, if you read the documentation around the attachment control, there are limits. You can upload files only if they are 50 megs or smaller. There are limitations that you need to be aware of. So the attachment data card here is what makes it possible for me not to leverage flow to post my data to my SharePoint list item. And the key to understand is that the attachment control expects the files that you add to this control to have a specific schema. And that schema 
is exactly what I leveraged for adding the photos. So when I go to add pictures, the on select function, this is the schema that it expects. It expects a schema that has the display name, the ID and the value. And that's the reason why I built that schema into my collection so that it works with the attachment control. And the reason why I leveraged good was because I wanted to keep the name of my attachment files or my images in this case unique. And back to my home page, when the user selects a specific record. So let's say I pick the home inspection record. I can see all my data right here at the bottom. I have this gallery that is basically showing the data from that collection of images. And how did I load that collection now for an existing item is so when the user selects this button to navigate to the view form experience right here is where I am loading that collection again and that collection I am loading directly from this item dot attachments because the schema of that collection matches the schema of my attachments. So once I have my collection loaded, I'm setting a variable which maintains the context of the item that the user has selected. And I then reset my form, set it in view mode and navigate the user. So when the user makes a selection, here I am with all that data with the collection preloaded. And you can see them right here in the attachments as well. For the attachment data card, I can always go ahead and hide this. And when the user clicks on edit to edit the form, I just change the mode of the form to edit. My collection is already loaded with those three images. And now if I click on the camera control, I can go ahead and take additional pictures and associate them with my list item. Now right here, I'm projecting my mobile device. I have logged in to my Power Apps app on my mobile device. I will launch my inspection app. Here are all the inspections. I can see them right here. I can select an existing record. I can scroll down. I can look at all the images that were captured. I can add additional images. In this case, I will go ahead and create a brand new record. So I'll click on the plus icon, add some sample data, and now go to add photos. This will now open the camera control on my mobile device. And right here, I will just go ahead and grab a few images of the laptop that I am inspecting. Once I'm done with this, I will click on back. I have my three photos. I will click on submit. And all of this data now will go to the SharePoint list item as attachments. So right there at the bottom is my laptop item. If I select that, I can go ahead and look at all the images that I captured right here. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that whenever I upload my new video, you get notified about it. Thank you so much for watching.